Hello and welcome to another tutorial by Classic Craft Studio. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do cutwork embroidery combined with felting, uh, needle felting and machine felting and then we're doing accents with free motion embroidery. I'm Rebecca and welcome to the Classic Craft Studio channel. So I used a water soluble pen to draw my design onto the fabric before I began. I started this design uh, using needle felting well, doing needle felting the fibers into the fabrics. Um, as it, it's been a long time since I've actually done a whole project with needle felting, so that was my initial intention. Um, but as the project progressed, I then switched over to the felting machine. For needle felting, um, you just got to make sure you've got a nice thick sponge behind your work so you don't damage your needle or the table that you're working on. And you're going to need felting needles for this. Um, I like to use a multi-needle for the bigger areas of felting and then a single needle to neaten up the edges. I find it easiest to have my fabric hooped in an embroidery frame. This all depends on the fabric that you're going to be felting into. For this, it's nice thin cotton, so yeah, I used an embroidery frame. After a while of felting by hand, I decided to use my felting machine after all. I mean, it's such a great machine, I can't resist playing with it. It's it's really has been brought so much creativity to my work, it's great fun. Uh, if you haven't watched my previous video on how to use a felting machine, I go into a lot more detail there. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly summarize today. I'm putting on the, the multi-needle as I want to felt a large part of, the, part of the design to start with because I've obviously got it already embedded in the fabric. I'm just trying to really get it in there. Um, so that because there's no threads or tension to worry about when it comes to this machine, it, take, it makes it such a lovely and easy machine to play with. The free motion embroidery part of this film was accidentally filmed in portrait mode. I'm not landscape. I'm really sorry about this. This was just purely a rookie mistake. Um, but luckily I've done a fair amount of free motion embroidery in videos in the past. So if, you know, if it's not showing up properly on your device, then please refer to one of these videos that I've done before.
And now we get to the cut work. We're going to start by, with going around the outline of our design, uh, just with two or three lines of straight stitch. I've, I've done a cut work embroidery video in the past, so if you need to refer to that, please do. So I'm, yeah, again, I'm just going to briefly summarize. So you do your, straight li uh, your lines of straight stitching on the outside. Then I cut out the heart shape on the inside of these stitches. When it comes to stitching the grid, you start by going from one side of the shape to the other. You secure with a little, few little stitches on the one side, and then you just, with straight stitch, you just stitch ac across the gap until you get to the other side. If this is your first time of doing it, it is a bit weird and a bit scary, but it does work. Because it looks like your threads are kind of forming a, a big loop at the bottom. But when you get to the other side, they'll just miraculously pull themselves straight the moment your needle hits that fabric. It's it's really quite incredible. Obviously, it takes a little bit of practice to get um, the speed in which you're moving your hoop and the speed at which you're um, forming your stitches so that you don't get massive long thread, li thread lines. But yes, it, generally speaking, it all works out very nice and neatly. Um, so yeah, it might involve a bit of practice, but it's great fun. I started with doing all the vertical lines and then I moved on to the horizontal lines. Once all the grid stitching was done, I switched back to zigzag set stitch and the satin stitch setting, and then I went around the outside of the heart with satin stitch. You just got to be careful when you're going over your grid lines, but generally speaking, it tends to work really well doing it this way around.
And that's that for today's little project. I'm busy with a big lampshade at the moment. I'm hoping to have finished filming that and editing and be able to release that next Friday. Um, so, if, yeah, so I just kept this week's project short and sweet just to show you some combination of techniques. Um, but that's all for today. Thanks for watching. As always, please don't forget to subscribe and to like this video. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Bye for now.